He's a man. Such a man. Hey now, it's the Rob from 1061 Kiss FM along with Eric Corners from WKQ. Hey, good. good to be here again. It is the Enhancement Talent, and uh, I hope you like our new uh, theme music. We're just going to kind of switch it out if you have any suggestions. That, of course, William Regal, a real man's man. That is such a, a great the theme. I remember the promos of him like chopping wood. I think. That could have been a great gimmick. We, we, that's another show. We, Do you we, think it could have been? I think it could have been because I think, you know, you can take a bad gimmick and have somebody in it pull it off. You can. And he's one of those guys that could have pulled that off. I wonder where that character could go, but I digress. Anyway, uh, that, that may be a show for the future. It here, could be. Uh, Underutilized gimmicks. It could have worked. Um, but anyway, it's the Enhancement Talent, and uh, if you have any suggestions for our theme song, uh, old school wrestling themes, let us know, and we'll add them you know, week by week. I'm excited for this one. This is one that kind of started on the phone with a friend of mine, and we have some very noticeable uh, wrestling pet peeves, things yes. that we see a lot and drive us crazy. Yeah, and I, I know everybody, you know, I mean, people will talk about, oh, I hate it that so and so's not getting pushed, or I hate it that uh, John Cena's been on top for 10 years. That's not the kind of things we're talking about. No, here. no, no. We're no, talking no. about little quirks within the world of wrestling. It could be specific in- instances or just, just something that, you know, happens all the time that just drives you crazy. What, what's one thing that drives you crazy? Well, my friend John got it started because he has this thing and he always has, he absolutely hates. When wrestlers don't wear knee pads, and when you have the tights on, it, he, I believe it makes them feel like it just, it's too naked. It doesn't seem like a competition at that point. It just seems like a, maybe like a porno or something. You've got to have good legs, or, or at least massive legs, like Andre the Giant. He didn't wear knee pads. You got to, I, I'd say cover them up, but that, he's not wearing the tights, though. Right. It's combined with the tights. I would say Cody Rhodes' horrible bird legs. Should, yeah, should always wear knee pads. It's knee- a good thing that he's wearing them. Okay, if you're going out to compete in a in a setting like this, if it, your psychology's in, you are wearing knee pads. You're trying to protect True. your knees. That's just my opinion. True, and I mean, but that's a shoot. I mean, I've I've been in a wrestling ring myself, and I wear knee pads. Yeah, you know, as you should. I mean, even if I'm managing, <laughs> I saw someone uh, like I live in an apartment complex, and the the workers were like tearing apart part of an sure. apartment complex. They're wearing knee pads. That's just that's True. just smart smart thinking. True, Antonio Cesaro. Though I can I can go without him wearing knee pads. I mean I know he's got the little things around his calves or whatever, but it, I mean it, it kind of makes him look like a, you know, like he's well he's a bad dude. That's not that doesn't bother me as much. But here's what gets me, is and here this is one I associate mostly with CM Punk, but all the, so many people do this. I know where you're going. <laughs> when wrestlers wear the tights, and they come out cutting their promo wearing a t-shirt. The image this reminds me of is like when a girl sleeps over your house and has to like borrow a t-shirt the next morning, you yes. know, and it's yes. just, she's just got the t-shirt and the panties on, or like the the scene with the Van Halen t-shirt in uh, sure, yeah. in the Wedding Singer. It just it looks like you're wearing a, a t-shirt that's too like your boyfriend's t-shirt and your panties. Yeah, CM Punk. I I think some of that is uh, you know the marketing of the t-shirts. You know, they, yeah, absolutely. WWE yes. wants to have their t-shirts out there. That's why it, they've ruined so many gimmicks. Uh, not ruined, but you know they they've they've watered watered them down like Bray Wyatt. I mean Bray Wyatt wearing their T-shirt underneath his 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 uh, getup. I mean it kind of ruins it. And uh, the same deal with on. well the same deal with uh, Damian Sandow too with the bathroom. Now he can no longer wear the bathroom because he's got to wear the shirt that's yeah, marketed. Shirt. Yeah, I agree. That that's one of my pet peeves. Is you know I understand you got to market the shirt, but don't sacrifice the gimmick because of the shirt. That that makes sense. Right. Like, The Undertaker should never come out in his own t-shirt. Right, and he never, well, I mean. Maybe back in like the 90s or yeah, something. Yeah, like. yeah, he did, he did. Oh, how about that big red shirt? I remember that, that devil true. shirt. He wore that he all wore the time. He wore that for a lot when he was doing the, uh, doing the bike I again. But, uh, you know, inconsistencies for me go way back. Um, I was probably six or seven years old when my dad taught me the first inconsistency to always look for. And uh, Jim Cornette managed the Midnight Express. And any time Jim Cornette would come out, you know, he'd be wearing those big Coke bottle glasses. But if he came out and he was not wearing those glasses, you knew he was going to get bumped in that match. You knew he was going to get beat up. Okay. And he did every time. And it, and it kept going all the way up until he managed Yokozuna and, and Owen Hart and all these guys. 
And that that was always the case. He didn't wear his glasses. You knew he was going to get beat up. I've never uh, I've never watched for that, but I have heard that before. That, yeah. That, that was a, a telltale sign that he would be taken You knew away. that was going to happen. Um, and, and then, you know, you move on into today's wrestling. I tell you what, there's some stuff in today's wrestling that uh, just the booking, it seems so lazy sometimes to me. Um, it's tough when you don't have enhancement guys that, you know, are around anymore. Like but us. Like us, the enhancement talent. Um but so you're using your regular guys. You have to sacrifice wins and losses and that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and make other guys look good. But to do it to a champion, and they do this all the time with the mid-card titles. Have you noticed this? T- uh, the Intercontinental title, the U.S. title, non-title matches, and they have these guys lose constantly. Okay. That drives me crazy. It's like the, if that happens, like they, there should immediately be a rematch and a match for the title, you know? I see what you're saying. And, and the, the other thing is handicap matches. When you take two credible guys and put them up against your main guy, whether it's a John Cena or whatever, how many times over the last 10 years has John Cena beat not only a tag team, but the tag team champions? <laughs> John <laughs> Cena should be the tag team champions by himself. He was the original <laughs> I am the tag team champions. That's, that just make no wonder the tag team division is so bad. Well, when you told me this thing about some storyline inconsistencies... Uh, the first thing I, I went to more writing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the first big inconsistency, at least like in continuity, the biggest one has got to be Vince McMahon is dead. True. Remember that one? Yes. Yes. And then, uh, other ones that come to my head are, uh, like, what about Kane? Well, I'm sorry, hold on. Before he was Kane, he was Dr. Isaac Yankum, DDS, with That's a true. set of green teeth. Exactly. Who's going to go see a dentist with green teeth? Come on now. Exactly. And then one more that you're talking about that kind of goes along with this is um, someone asked Chris Jericho in an interview. I don't know how I heard this, but I remember him being interviewed about this. And someone implied that his double power bomb that he used to do years ago mm-hmm. was the fakest move in wrestling. And he goes, I promise you that is not the fakest move in wrestling. The fakest move in wrestling is the Irish whip. True. <laughs> and he says, if you ever throw somebody into a set of ring ropes, their natural instinct is not going to be to bounce back. To bounce off, right. So I always enjoyed that. You as have to as... suspend your disbelief a little bit. But there are some things like punching, for example. Bad punching can ruin a match. Mm-hmm. And I, I've got a friend that is on the indie scene. He knows he can't punch. He is not a good puncher. His punches look weak, so he doesn't punch. Mm-hmm. That simple. If you can't punch, don't punch. Right. Forearm, kick, whatever. Randy Orton has some of the worst punches I've ever seen in my life. Uh, yeah, bad punching, forget it. Randy Orton, stop punching. Don't punch like this. <laughs> exactly. This. And, and about that light, too. <laughs> don't punch. Do something else, Randy. Um, I, other than that, I mean, you know, I mean, we can go outside the WWE for me, like... You know, they're uh, hardcore matches. Stop it. <laughs> like, what about them? I, I, okay, I enjoy if they're done right. WWE did, did them okay. Hardcore for the sake of being hardcore and overly hardcore matches are, that's what's ruined. And, and specifically the, here locally, well, it's really ruined locally. The concept like of like a C4 explosive match is kind of stupid. Oh my gosh, the light bulbs, the, you know, the, e, e, there's Fans even bring a place weapons. for barbed wire sometimes. But I, I've known local organizations here in the tri-state that would have a main event and a hardcore main event. What do these guys have against each other? Well, I don't know. It's just time to, you know, it's time to lead. My favorite thing about those matches no, don't like it. are when they staple the dollar bills to the heads and the guys don't even try to fight it. Oh, no. They just, they just, like, oh, they think they're so tough sitting there and take it. Like, yeah, if you're really getting stapled in the head, you're probably going to put your hands up to stop yeah, it. It's, it's just, just th- that, that stuff has got to go. Um, this, was, this was a good conversation, I think. Yeah, uh, and I, I've got one more on my list okay, that, that I mentioned to you the other, and this, this is one specific event. Probably one of the biggest moments of all time, uh, but it makes me laugh every time I see it. Monday Night Raw, The Rock's title celebration, Vince McMahon in the ring with the corporation, Stone Cold comes to the ring in the beer truck. I know. You're- okay? <laughs> Great moment. You see Vince McMahon and Shane and The Rock swimming in the beer as Stone Cold pulls that hose out of that beer truck and is spraying the ring with beer. I, I think that was like the number one Raw moment voted. Great moment. Still funny moment to watch. How could that possibly bother Eric? Why? 
what beer truck do you know <laughs> has a hose connected to beer that just sprays? Like, no, what, wait a minute. what would be the point of a hose that sprays beer out of a Aren't beer truck? Aren't bars like gas stations where you just kind of put, you just put it down? Yeah, right. Just... That's exactly how they work. That's <laughs> that, that moment just bothers me to no end, and I don't know why. Uh, but and, and then Kurt Angle does it with a milk truck later, which I could actually handle because milk trucks do have hoses. Well, and also remember that not only did it have a hose, but he mostly threw cartons. That's true. He threw a lot That's of cartons. True. But anyway, my pet peeves out there. What are your pet peeves? That's what we want to know. So just let us know. Email you know, us. You got emails? Right here on the bottom. You got uh, Twitter, all that stuff? Let us know. We are the Enhancement Talent. We are real men's men. and uh, <laughs> Boy, are we. We are here for your entertainment. Also, uh, we're we'll, we'll, we'll going to try to get a second episode up this week, too, after Hey, Raw. yeah, we'll, we'll see how Raw goes. And uh, I'm, I'm still expecting Daniel Bryan to be in that title match. I'm almost 100% sure that's going to happen. Ready to see that. All right, then we'll check in with you guys uh, later on the week. Thanks for watching. This is the Enhancement Talent, real men's men, right?